approach to tackling insecurity. Former head of state, General Abdul Salami Abubakar. Former president, good luck, Jonathan. Federal lawmakers, security agencies, members of the diplomatic corps, traditional and religious leaders, attend a one-day policy dialogue on state policing system. The event, which is organized by the House of Representatives and the Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, comes as the National Assembly prepares for another round of constitution amendment. There are lots of people who are very, very anxious that the police be reformed, that the police be given more powers, uh, be given more responsibility. Perhaps that the way to go might actually be to decentralize the police in a way that ensures that the decentralization of the police safeguards it from abuse. The prospect of a state-level policy architecture, which is at the heart of this dialogue, is paramount. Given the imperatives of addressing the scourge of crime, insurgency, and various forms of violence that are impacting on Nigeria's development trajectory, thereby presenting a threat to the well-being and safety of all citizens. In the previous assembly, the state police bill was rejected by federal lawmakers who feared that state governors may abuse the system. It appears the federal legislature is shifting grounds, just as former heads of states throw their weight behind the creation of state police to address the security concerns across the country. As we explore the models of state policy that have been successful in other nations, we must be judicious in adopting these frameworks to fix our unique Nigerian situation. We are not going to debate, and we should not waste our time debating whether we should have state police or not. Listening to the speaker, he gave the history, even in this country, we operated it before. Why is that the military scrapped it? Because of the abuse. And that is the area we should concentrate on. As much as we are talking of uh, establishing state police, we should also look into the role vis-a-vis -vis of our royal fathers. The current police leadership and its parent ministry, however, appear not to be in accord on the matter of state police. I will emphasize that state police can enhance local responsiveness, improve crime prevention, and threaten security at the, grass, at the grassroots level. I will recommend an institutional and legal framework that delineates the roles, responsibilities, and jurisdiction of state police forces within the broader national security architecture. It is the submission of the leadership of the Nigerian police force that Nigeria is yet to mature and ready for the establishment of state control police. This is due to the underlying reasons. One, adequate there is no adequate resources in place for police infrastructure. Again, there are potential for abuse of power by state political leadership. For President Bola Tinubu, who is represented by his vice, the liberations on state police must be thorough to produce workable resolutions. The president deserves commendation for his openness and proactive stance towards the idea of reforming and decentralizing the police force. The concept of state policing is not merely a policy proposal, but a potential milestone in the evolution of our law enforcement framework. In the last administration, 25 states delayed consideration of the Constitution Amendment bills sent by the National Assembly because the National Assembly did not include the establishment of state police. Also, immediate past President Muhammad Buhari openly rejected the idea of a state policing system. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. Okay, let uh, state police to be or not to be, we'll find out from the two gentlemen who are here with us. Uh, Honorable Obin Achiluk, as a former member of the Ninth Assembly, and sitting beside him is Honorable Philip Agbese, who is a spokesperson of the Tenth House of Reps Committee on Constitution Amendment. Gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for coming on today. 
Good morning. Thank you very much. Well, um, Honorable Philip, this is a matter that um, is going to be part of the amendments of the Constitution, and they, they have to amend the laws to ensure that this happens. I know that uh, probably might be early days yet, because I don't think the House has taken any position, correct me if I'm wrong, but there will be several debates uh, on this matter, and I think the House will also welcome that uh, eventually expansive session on this matter. Um, perhaps I should ask, so uh, what is the thinking, the approach, uh, maybe for you or the House, if you will, on this matter? Well, uh, thank you very much, Chamberlain. Um, we have introduced a new culture in, in, in the 10th Assembly in terms of uh, engagement with the masses. You will recall that on the 13th of June 2023, when uh, His Excellency Dr. Tajuddin Abbas has Zoom, the leadership of the 10th Assembly has represented him as the speaker. He declared that the 10th Assembly uh, is going to be about the masses. It's going to be about the people. Uh, it was in that vein that he christened the 10th National Assembly, the 10th House of Representatives, as the people's house. So in line with that... Uh, Isn't I that how it, how it is by default design? It's the people's house, normally. Did he need to say that? For well, what, what changes if he says that? Uh, in truth and in spirit, uh, what we have today, just like what we did yesterday, uh, to subject uh, the bill before the House uh, to wider consultation with stakeholders, to engage everybody, you know, to bring in their opinion. And you, if you saw what happened yesterday, let me use the, the Inspector General of Police presentation and the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs presentation, where you see that these are people who are coming from the same executive branch of government, but still do not agree on what state police should be. That is very heady for our democracy. It is the kind of robust debate that we want, and that is why we call it the People's House. So from top to bottom, we are going to get um, stakeholders across various sectors of the country to make their input. And that is why um, Mr. Speaker, in his speech yesterday, you know, said those for state police and those against state police, that we in the parliament do not believe that anybody is wrong. The Inspector General of Police is correct. The Honorable Minister of Police Affairs is correct. And in line with our mantra of the People's House, we are going to subject the debate, you know, with the current realities to wider consultation, get the input of Nigerians, because we have now returned the parliament and the process of lawmaking back to Nigerians. Mm. Tell us what you want. We are here to serve you. you know, and in the 10th Assembly, we have said we must do things differently. That is to say that the bills that will be passed by the House will not be the, 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 the opinion of the 360 members alone, but it's going to have a larger input of the 240 million population of our people. So when we take this, yesterday was just one step. Mm -hmm. Other steps will follow. And that's exactly what we are doing in the Constitution Amendment Committee engage stakeholders as much as possible. Let their input, you know, be the supreme ruling law for us. Mm. So if at the end of the day, Nigerians agree, after all the consultations, that we want state police, the 10th National Assembly will be left with no option but to give to Nigerians what they want. And in I, the event um, that they say, we don't want state police, mm -hmm. we will give to Nigerians what they want. Honorable Chiloka, I mean, this suggests, I mean, some people could interpret this as to, so Night Assembly was not even the people's house. So no. they're, they're returning it back to the people. So is that why this no. fell through when it came last time? No, absolutely not. <laughs> the National Assembly has always been the people's house. Um, um, but just so that I said that the right to honorable speaker has, um, in his wisdom, christened the people's house, which we all believe in, because we represent the people. He's been a member of the National Assembly from 2011, and um, this time around, he's subjecting all his deliberations more to the, um, to the wider range of our, our people. But to answer your question fully, it's still the people's house. We belong to the people's house. We okay. represent the people. 360 of us represent 360 federal constituencies all over Nigeria, and that is what we represent. And... Um, Coming back to the bill at hand, um, if I may go in, um, I want to first of all thank the Right Honourable Speaker, Tadjidin Abbas, for convening what we saw yesterday and um, for being at the forefront of making sure every Nigerian understands where we are today. 
And where we are today is a situation where it has become imperative that we have this discussion, looking at how Nigeria has panned out. We are grappling with a lot of insecurity, and uh, it seems that the Nigerian police, as presently constituted, might not be able to um, sort out the issues we have. And so, we, we, I also want to thank the Right Honorable Deputy Speaker, Okeze, Benjamin Okeze. This is the bill that is presently before the House, um, attempting to amend sections 214 to all the way to 216 and thereabout of the um, Nigerian Police Establishment Bill 2023. Um, so, what are we trying to do here? What, sorry, when I say we, National yeah, Assembly hasn't left me yet. <laughs> uh -huh. So, the in intent is to see to a more effective, efficient, robust policing or police force in Nigeria. So I'm going to come speak to proponent and opponent of this particular bill. And what we have yesterday is a situation where, from the statistics we see, a policeman is supposed to take care of 450 people or persons in Nigeria. At the moment, we have one policeman to almost about 600 persons in, in the country. And that is not adequate. It's far from being adequate. And many have argued that even the police, I'm sorry to say, might not definitely know the, um, the number of policemen we have in Nigeria because the statistics vary. About maybe 371,000 um, uh, police force in Nigeria vis-a-vis um, -vis about 226.2 million Nigerians, which that number, I think the census should give us the right number that we are in Nigeria. And of course, we've got memory lane on how um, if you go back on how the police force has started in Nigeria in the 18th century of the, both the Northern Constabulary and um, the, the Royal Niger, uh, and then, of course, um, the Eastern Niger uh, Constabulary coming together after the amalgamation to, of course, over time, form what we know today as the Nigerian police force. And it's become a huge operation with the Nigerian police force, having about 17 zones, about eight administrative um, um, organs within the police and this amount of persons. So if I may go quickly because of, of time to talk about what are the issues that the, the police force had yesterday, like the honorable member here has said um, about the disagreement between the Minister of Police Affairs and the representative of the IGP. What was the IGP's grounds? The IGP's ground is that, um, number one, that Nigeria is not ripe, we're not ready due to the a normal structure of the Nigerian police force, having police stations in the 36 states of the Federation, 774 local government. You have to deal with issues of staffing, recruitment, promotions, arms, ammunition, all that, which is huge, that uh, maybe the state might not be able to fund. But you see, there is something about this bill that I see that is also very nice. The bill has made it in such a way, and which is what the argument we've had. Um, yesterday night, I was talking to my, my brother as well, when we were discussing about these issues. He also has, shares the same views, and many other persons, some honorable members, even the speaker, and of course the deputy speaker, share this view that we can have a, a federal police and a state police, and then we can monitor it in such a way that the Senate House of Reps will monitor what goes on in the federal legislature, the federal police, sorry, and the House of Assembly monitors what goes on with the commissioner. So any state that can come up with state police should, of course, imbibe or take it as we have put in the bill and run with the state police in terms of having a police commissioner in charge, um, non-interference by the state governors. Because Solomon Arasi, the former IGP of police, said one thing yesterday, that the governors are like emperors, that those are the people you have to fear the most. And in any way, the governors already will always claim that um, they are not chief security officers. They have what they call security votes. Some of them have almost 10, 12 billion. In fact, most people don't know how much is in that security vote. So why don't you take that money, if it scales through, to fund the police in your state? If you cannot, then rely on the federal, on the federal government who can provide the, the, the federal police for you so that you can monitor what goes on in your state and we can leave these issues over. There have been more than... Um, 700 cases of kidnapping, and because in Nigeria we're not very numerical, we're not sure of these cases, over 5 billion paid in ransom. This is the one they claim is official. People are being kidnapped every day on a daily basis, and it's even become like a recharge card business. 
kidnap you, take 100k, and you move on. So, so then, some of the concerns okay. there, as raised by mm. the IGP, is uh, suggest that's part of what you're addressing. Yes. Which is, what do we do with the way the governors may handle it, may abuse it? Yes. In fact, abuse of this formation, generally speaking, that's mm -hmm. one of the huge concerns. Yes. So, because that's why some people thought, no. Because, um, I mean, the former president also said, the most important thing, too, is we should see how do we make sure that governors don't use this for ballot stuffing and winning elections. Okay, so yesterday you saw a station where President Jonathan spoke about um, the Nigerian police. In fact, President Jonathan simply said, the matter is, is closed. We've discussed this matter. What we're waiting for is suppressions. But he went ahead to say that while you're trying to reorganize the Nigerian police force, you should rejig the INEC. That he has been on so many missions outside Nigeria where you have... Um, the policemen uh, the, the, outside, the, outside the, venue. the venue of the elections, mm. and you have uh, a, an election venue where you have multiplicity of polling units, and you go there, you vote, and you come out. And so the policemen do not go near the election you know, venues. And this, this is one area to make sure you win. What about the second area that people talk about? Mm -hmm. The governor having access to the police to intimidate his perceived political enemies. I mean, I want to be wow. able to get you on that because mm. he is absolutely correct. He, he, he alluded to a particular lecture that he covered in Senegal and I happened to be there with him. It was interesting yes. to see that the police were nowhere, the police were outside the venue. Yes. But another thing to add is that mm. there was no technology in the place. There was no beaver machine. <laughs> they, they didn't have to contend with a lot of the things that we had to contend with. And they also didn't have to contend with the kind of crowds mm. that we have to contend with. Our situation is a little more peculiar. Yes. But I wanted to be able to get you on something that you talked about and it's, you know, it's also ties to the question Chamberlain just asked you. And it has to do with control, monitoring of governors. I've always yes. wanted to be able to get from a lawmaker's perspective. Are there actual I law? I have two. Are there actual laws? Maybe I should ask um, Mr. Agbasa this question. <laughs> Agbasa, are there actual laws that can rein in governors from acting like emperors? Are there checks in our laws so that when a governor, if, if the state police thing passes, would they, are there ways that, you know, at, at the federal level or at the National Assembly, you can check his behavior? Yes. Um, because of the system of government that we run in the country, uh, from past experience, uh, those who have spoken uh, against the state police on the grounds of governors, you know, misusing or abusing the instrument of state police. Uh, quite a number of persons have agreed with them based on the very strong arguments that they have raised. And uh, in making an attempt to answer your question, because I think uh, it is one that the answers are very obvious. Yes, uh, the National Assembly, you know, uh, and the federal government, you know, has a clearly defined structure. And that is why, you know, the issue of decentralizing the police one of the arguments, you know, in, in, in framing the Constitution is the issue of exclusive list and concurrent list. And uh, actually, I'm not, um, I, I don't want to preempt, you know, the views of Nigerians, because as much as possible, Mr. Speaker has admonished the committee, you know, to do its best to be impartial and neutral as much as possible, you know, to also equally give Nigerians the confidence that is required mm -hmm. to make a new, to amend the Constitution. But in that, let us look at the issue of uh, allocations, you know, to local government. How have the governors managed allocations to, 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 to local government, which is directly under their purview? Whereas the federal government does not respect the law and does not temper with resources going to the state. How do the governors behave in that regard? Then yesterday, I argued hmm. somewhere too. Sorry, before that time, I mean, if I could just, another angle from that, uh, from the Kerr's question is, in terms of the laws that are there to make sure governors don't abuse the police force, yes, the IGPRS and several other people may have their opinion, but are we not missing or glossing over inadvertently somehow the fact that there's also actually a school of thought that believes the lawmakers are maybe the problem? Because in the states 
how many of those state assemblies actually hold the governors accountable? Yeah, you, you, you see, like uh, in the night assembly, the constitutional uh, amendment committee, you know, did quite a lot, and they made a brick wall when, you know, they were unable to get 24 state houses of assembly. And that's the irony, you know, about uh, the affairs of this country. Because even the issue of state house of assembly autonomy was passed by the national parliament. And when it got to the, 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 the state parliament, they vehemently rejected the autonomy so that was supposed to give. Is it the governors or the state assembly themselves? <laughs> so I, I think what happens, uh, I, I don't want to be categorical about it because oh. I've never been in the state house of assembly before. But what we have heard most of the times is that the governors for fear of impeachment, you know, install their cronies as speakers and have full grip of the state houses of assembly. That is one school of thought. But for us in the Constitutional Amendment Committee, what we want to do, the committee headed by uh, Right Honorable Benjamin Ukeze Kalu, is to ensure that in doing things differently, we, you know, in making the new law or in amending the law, we bring in those check and balances. And that is why if you look into this, uh, into this bill, you see the place of the Federal Police Service Commission and the State Police Service Commission. So, so, and if so we just use... to answer my, just mm -hmm. so I can get a clear answer from you, the answer is no, not no, yes. No. That no. the state is not right for state police? No, no, no. Or that are, the governor Are there continue? laws that can control a governor or stop a governor from using state police to carry out nefarious activities? No, is there in, any in, kind in, of check at the in, federal level? No, in the proposed bill, mm. the, the, there is a place for the establishment of the Federal Police Service Commission mm. and the State Police Service Commission. And in doing that, it's not far from what we have as a National Judicial Commission, where even though we have judicial officers appointed by governors at the state level, at the, at the state high court, the magistrate, they are controlled, the state customary courts are controlled by the state. But again, you have a national body, the National Judicial Council, which deals with the issue of disciplining erring judges. So if we mirror that, you know, I, I believe that we'll be able to address some of the fears and like I mentioned earlier, our duty as a parliament is if at the end of the day we agree that what Nigerians want is state police, as a parliament, you know, that um, is equal to the tax, we will be able to introduce checks and balances. So whichever direction Nigerians decide that the issue of state police should go, we as a parliament have a role you know, a strong role to play in ensuring that whichever direction we're able to introduce those checks and balances in our laws to ensure that. And again, I've argued that even if we want the current police to work in line with the 10th Assembly's legislative agenda, one point we are very serious about is the issue of oversight. If we oversight the current police as presently constituted properly, like we, are, we, we have commenced, the current police will be able to deliver even far more than what is being expected in the state police structure. Because today, you have uh, police officers who are not properly remunerated. We'll, we'll get we, to that, we, Shabiyan. We, 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 I we, want to get to Rebuchidoka to actually yeah. give me more clarity. Yeah. So I'm hearing futuristic a lot from mm -hmm. him. We mm -hmm. will be, we will incorporate, there are mm -hmm. plans to, as is. As is. Is yes. there anything that can no, hold so these men it, 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 from being emperors? Mm and using something that is actually mm. important to the Nigerian people. Because mm. when the conversation about state police comes up, people say, tend to forget that. Mm. When the conversation about state police comes up, it's got nothing to do with all of this politics. Mm. We're worried about the security situation of the sure. country. And mm. we're the way terrorist bandits and all of these people move mm. from one place to the other is through the local systems. And we want to be able to ensure that states are able to hone in on the structures that they have to protect the Nigerian people. Yesterday, we saw 300 warlords in, in northern Nigeria alone. Mm -hmm. These are some of the issues. How do, how do warlords exist and mm -hmm. operate in a place where there is a state governor, there is state assembly, there is local government? How does that happen? So is there any way that we can control, because this is the major fear, this abuse by the governors. Mm. Is there any way to control it right now? Or are we waiting for something to be done? Okay, so remember that this is a framework. What the National Assembly is trying to do is to tell Nigerians, we have come up with a framework to say, let's decentralize the police. The way it is, is fully centralized within the federal systems. We can move the police force down to the state and to the local government. 
And so what we need to do is to bring about a framework that will help that work. The last amendment of the Police Act was in 2020. So if you look at the Police Act, of course, the governors have no place. What I mean by that is specifically because it's a federal police. And of course, it gives you the provisions that deal with how to deal with the police and all that, whether it's maintained or not. And that's why you see the governors keep telling you that as the police force is presently constituted, they have no right over the police commissioner because that right res resides with the, um, with the IGP. And so coming with that, with this framework, is to say, when we create a state police to assuage your fears about abuses, because what everybody keeps talking about is, let's run away from these governors. These governors are, <laughs> are emperors. Let's not go near them. But I, I say one thing. Let's measure. One, abuses by governors is one. Two, what other indices do you have on the, on the other side of the table? Banditry, kidnapping, um, theft, criminal activities, 300 warlords, maybe, more, maybe 301, because I say we don't know how to, we don't really count these things. Um, if not talking about the Southeast, the South-South, you saw what happened in that community, Okuama or somewhere, where 17 soldiers were killed, unprecedented, in a country called Nigeria. So when you look at all these issues we have, as against abuse, then you know that this is just one issue. And within the provisions or the proviso of the new, new framework, for creation of the state police, we are going to create, it's going to create an enabling environment that will make sure that the governors do not have control over the state commissioner or the state police. And it's going to be there. He mentioned it as well. So that these are some of the things we are, and you know, this is, you, you test out new amendments, new laws, and see, and the way it goes, we keep tightening the news to make sure that what we want from the governors is, Take that your um, security vote that you spend the way we don't know, put it back into sponsoring the police. So I swear the fears of people like the IGP who says we are not ready due to the enormous um, investment you need to make so that viable states in Nigeria who can afford it will probably set up their new... Maybe so you, you, you prefer that one? So that not everybody will go at the same time. If states feel I can yes. afford it, go ahead. Absolutely. If you feel you can't, stay away. Just stay, just work with the federal police. You can still stay by the, with the federal police who will also make sure that they protect you. And even in the state police, even in the police in the states that are very viable, when there are so many other issues coming up and they can't handle it, they can have a recourse back to the federal police and request for more assistance who will come in and help. But the challenge is that we're looking at that from that angle alone <laughs> because <laughs> In practice, mm. if a state says that, oh boy, this governor has state police and he's using it to, he's winning elections, and me, <laughs> and then I lose, this will come into play. Uh, no. you, you say, uh, Chamberlain, um, when uh, mm. former president uh, Jonathan was making his presentation yesterday, mm -hmm. he talked about elections. Yeah, and uh, it's a key think, concern. Yeah, it's a key concern. Again, but that, he, for me, uh, is a wrong mindset. The well-being of our citizens... You no, know, is, he not, is he not being realistic? Yeah, you, He's no, being realistic. No, 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 he was. But again, I don't want the debate around state police, you know, to be limited to the issue of elections alone. Why? Mm. Uh, because, you, you see, today, we, from the proposals that we have received, and that is why we have listened to him yesterday as a parliament, we have listened to some key traditional rulers, the committee will be taking the debate further again, we intend to even engage, you know, stakeholders like Okada riders. What do you think is possible? Because, you know, police has to do with the issue of protection of life and properties and, again, containing crimes. So it, it goes beyond... Elections are very important, but it is something that is about the totality of our well-being as a people. It is even the, about the unborn child. So, so you should include it. You can't exclude yeah, no, it. No, 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 we're not excluding it. But I'm saying that it should not be the only reason why we should, you know, decide on the new framework. But like I said earlier, and it remains our stand in the people's house, that we are leaving it to the views. Even though as individuals, uh, in some, some, some of my colleagues, you know, did not agree with the bill. That was why like when it came, of course, we always have the nays for uh, against it. 
But we have agreed as a parliament with our new doctrine and philosophy that beyond uh, state police, the other issues like electoral reforms that are in the constitutional amendment and everything that people have proposed must be taken to the masses of our country. And it is what they want that will do. Our only duty, our only you know, duty yeah. will be to fine tune. Oh, the light yeah. and the, the yes. our, our, our duty you will be to, is the house of the people. Yes, to fine tune. <laughs> when it came to the debate as to the age qualification for politicians, they didn't take it to the people. No. No. They decided that. Yeah, so, well, no, 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 no. You know, I want to be able to talk about the issues. But no, very weight. Very weight. I want to be able to talk about the issues. Very weight issues. That the IG had yesterday. One of them, we talked about two of them, which mm -hmm. is funding of the police, abuse of power. Of power. There's also the fact that the state police would lead to multiple structures mm -hmm. in the state. Does this bill address that? Yes. So, um, as I've said, the, um, of course, the IGP in protecting his, um, would I call it domain, because um, someone, the former, one of the IGPs um, actually joked that he has his own political party, which is the Nigerian police force, which does not intervene, interfere with, the, um, with what we do in the democratic setting, because they're supposed to be neutral. Now, if you, if you recall yesterday what the representative of IGP said, that in their recommendations, that they should subsume the Federal Road Safety Corps, the um, N NCDC, NCDC, yeah. NCDC, and other organs of government into the Nigerian police force. As far as he's concerned, we should collapse every other thing and put into the police force. And so that, it, to his mind, is to um, come to the point he just made so that there won't be too many structures all over. But you see, these are organs that do different things. Nigeria is a peculiar country. I believe that the road safety should keep doing its works. Um, NSCDC. Uh, NSCDC, which also helps with vandalism. And why all this is coming up, especially excluding road safety, for example, NSCD, is because we haven't had a model, a system that will protect everybody. And so we now have to create other avenues. But by the time you create state police and you structure everything well, you'd be surprised to know that some agencies will probably be rejected or moved around to make sure that they form what we want them to form. There are not going to be multiple um, agencies. What we're talking about is the Nigerian police as is known today. In fact, instantly, I think I was, moving, I was even the one, not I think I was the one that moved the motion to remove the force from the police. So it's not Nigerian police. Um, Did anything change with that? Well, What's in the name? We, we, we start changing with our mindset. Oh. It's our mindset. Okay. When you say Nigerian police force, everything they do is act with force. They should have to understand that they have to work with the people. Um, there are areas of intervention. We've seen police people in this country who have intervened in even helping with who the citizens. Who provide service. Who provide service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not every time that you must hang off, you must beat, you must shoot. And those are some of the things. And I've seen the police, the Nigerian police react by deroping or deroping some of the police officers who have infringed. Coming back to elections and um, the Nigerian police, you, you probably cannot, you know, extricate that from the Nigerian police because we've seen that they are also playing an integral part. Is the Nigerian police the only agency that is involved in elections? They are not. On the day of the election, there are other agencies. And while we talk about, uh, I started contesting the election in 2007. From 2007, I've seen the tremendous improvement from elections of 2007 and elections of 2023. Is it perfect in 2023? No. Has it improved from 2007? Yes. In 2007, it is, it, that's where we'll be having elections in the field and results have been announced. You are in this country. You are still casting your ballot. And, we, and we've seen in this country where results were announced, the number of voters or those who cast their vote was more than the number of accredited voters. We've seen it happen in this country. We've seen it going on. But going forward, with improvement with INEC and improvement with technology and all we're doing, we'll find out that when we reject you know, it, what the other, are those issues? The, the other issue is that, I mean, yeah, I know you talked about Beavers, mm. you know, where lots of people had a lot of hope as to what was going to happen. They came out, many actually came out based on thinking that there was going to be transparency yes. for, for that election. So, of course, mm. the rest, uh, they say, is history. history. Mm. So, the big question, if they trusted politicians at that point in time or the authorities to make that happen and 
the results came out the way they did with the expectations of the people. How can they trust politicians to get this right? Because mm. if the federal police, well, yes, cannot mm. handle the issues of policing, interfering with elections, and the way security agencies interfere with elections, what makes us think that well, these measures we're going to put in place will address it if it's going to benefit, say, assuming state government? Uh, okay, I think uh, I should touch on that. Mm -hmm. uh, when we came on board as a parliament in June 2023, uh, one of the most honest things after President Umar Yaradua agreed some time ago that his elect the election that produced him was flawed, the current parliament did agree that at the moment we do not have the best electoral system. And that there is also a need, you know, for us to look at the issues in the 2023 elections. And as a parliament, uh, we have a couple of eight to nine amendments, you know, that we have received and, you know, presented before the Nigerian people as a committee on constitution amendment. Mm -hmm. So the issue of electoral reform is very, very key. And it is one of the key uh, policies that uh, the Tenth Assembly's uh, 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 philosophy of the Right Honorable Speaker Tajuddin Abbas, it tends to address. We want to see, you know, not just, um, you know, laws, because in 2022, we had an amendment to the Electoral Act. We want to now begin to see uh, not just amendments, but how these amendments, you know, are, um, are, uh, had the work. And that is why in the Constitutional Amendment uh, Committee, we have set timelines, you know, not to cause amendment, you know, five months to the end of the parliament, but make possible amendments and the law becomes operative at least two years before election. We begin to test them. And you can test some of these amendments, you know, even before primaries with the electoral process. For instance, we, we, we've just had an election in Ondo State. Election is coming up again. Uh, primaries just took place in Ondo. Yeah, Elections are coming yeah. up in Edo and Ondo. So with the correct um, uh, electoral act, if we go there and the things that we have seen from the courtrooms, you know, pronouncement by court on the electoral act, where mistakes were made and all of all that. Right, General, so we intend to... We're winding down, but a combination of factors, really. Mm -hmm. If you look at the states where the state independent electoral commission conducts elections, local government elections, we all know the results. Yes. The states win its landslide. No, you wins can't. everything, everything. Yes. Everything. Yes. It is only at the center mm -hmm. that everything. you have. Everything. No, it is only at the mm -hmm. center. That is with CEC. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine if add to that, mm -hmm. they then control the police. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. win everything and run opposition out of town. Yes. So, uh, Chambali, mm -hmm. you see, the beauty of democracy mm -hmm. is it, it, not about us. No, this no. I'm talking about the issues. Yes, no, 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 yes. And that's why I, I said it, that's democracy. You know, in a democracy, if the people are crazy enough, in quote, to say this is what we want. And the larger population of the people who, in quote, are okay. crazy, okay. in line with them, mm. right. say this is what we in want. Line in well. line with our philosophy, there will be in, nothing we can do about it. In, in narrowing down and in buttressing that point, I think that we have to juxtapose the major issues. Nigeria is drowning by the day in insecurity, by the day. In Abuja, where we live, that we thought was safe, it's really no longer safe. I, I, with dismay, I watched one of the army chiefs talking about the military intervention around FCT to make sure they curb some of the criminalities we see. So the military is overstretched, the police is underfunded, crime is not abating. We have so many issues going on that we are now grappling with these issues. So what do we do? What do we really have to do as a people? Now, you are also just opposing the amendments to the Police Act with that of, of, of INEC. These are the issues that we need to work out. As elections, we have elections going on, we are definitely going to be having amendments and, of course, watching out on how our elections play out. It's a continuous exercise is not going to be a one-stop shop and finally if this some of the, i don't know if this is some of the final things we need to say i want to thank yesterday um what really has happened um as i said in the beginning the speaker the deputy speaker 
members of the National Assembly for that forum yesterday, and also President Jonathan for his contributions, of course, the Vice President and the President lending, lending their support. The Royal Father, the Sultan of Sokoto, who was there yesterday, um, the Obi of Onecha, who couldn't make it, and then the Oni of Ife, who simply took up the microphone and said, listen, let's stop the talk. Let's walk the, the talk. This is the time to act. If we want to act to safeguard our country so that we don't become, if you look at the index, Nigeria is way low. It's a dangerous moment to live in, mm. and we need to take the right. proper steps to make sure we safeguard our lives and property. All right, Honorable Obin Ashidoga, the former member of the Ninth Assembly. We've also had uh, Honorable Philip Agbese, who is a spokesman of the Tenth House of Reps Committee on Constitutional Amendments. Mm. Thank you both for coming on this morning. Thank you.